Now we're going to talk about switch port analyzer or span, which basically allowed to analyze the traffic passing through the switches, particular interface or particular VLAN. So consider if you have a switch connect, uh, connected inside your LAN and you may have a couple of windows in Linux box or some other devices connected to your switch and you want to monitor them who actually sending data and, and uh, what kind of this sending data to the internet or particular interface. So let's say this is PC A and PC B and you want to monitor how they're going to send data from PC A to PC B for security purpose or for monitoring purpose for some other purpose. You can enable switch port analyzer or a spam. So if you're talking more about spam, so analyze or monitor traffic for security and other purpose as I told you earlier and can be analyzed interface or interfaces. So you may have a multiple source interface which you want to analyze and you want to send data to particular destination port where your analyzer device is connected like a PC with Wireshark or some other packet sniffer software. So can be can be analyzed interface or interfaces or particular VLAN as well as a source interface or a source of traffic and the traffic going to be sent or a traffic copy uh, uh, the copy of traffic going to be sent to the destination interface or interfaces so you may have a couple of monitoring device as well or a multiple device which is connected to the particular VLAN so they can going to monitor who actually sending data to the particular interface or a particular VLAN. So traffic can be analyzed on particular direction like sending or receiving or both direction. On destination port analyzer device going to be connect. So you, you may have IDS or you may have a PC which have a pa packet sniffer software like uh, Wireshark. If you're talking more about the span, we have three different type of span like local span. So span which is locally to the particular switch. So you may have a single switch like in this diagram as we can see. So suppose we have an internet connectivity as well and I want to see PCA going to send what kind of data PCA going to send to the internet or what amount of data going to send to the internet. So I'm going to monitor this using span. So that span known as a local span since we, uh, we currently connected with the same switch. We have a, another span which is known as a uh, R span or remote span. So there is a detail I have mentioned already like source and destination code on same switches or same switch stack. A switch stack basically a group of switches which is uh, virtually look like a single switch. So tagging and encapsulation is not required because this is locally significant or locally connected both of port, source port and destination port. A source port which is where traffic going to be copy and destination port where copied traffic going to be sent. Likewise, if you're talking about remote span or R span, source and destination port can be different switches or switch stack. In a case of R span, we're going to use a dedicated VLAN to transport a copy of traffic. That VLAN also known as remote span VLAN. So you may have a one or another uh, multiple switches connected from source switch to destination source uh, destination switch. That's why we require uh, we require to send data over a trunk port using TAC. Uh, if you're talking about CCNP 2.0 switch, we don't need to discuss about ER span, but for, for general discussion, it is encapsulated R span, which is closely uh, identical to remote span, but it is a little bit different, like encapsulated into GRE. So these both are actually layer 2 based only. But if you're talking about this one, this use GRE tunnel in order to send data to the destination. So as we can see, can be sent across layer 3 domain. And it is a Cisco proprietary and available on higher platform only. So let's take another look of 
these documents that make sense. So like if you're talking about local span, both devices, a device which is sending data, a device which is monitoring data is going to connect with the single switch, excuse me, local switch or a switch stack. If you're talking about the remote span, you may have a multiple switches and maybe let's say this is switch A, switch B, C, D and device is connected with the switch D which is going to monitor the traffic. So whatever data data generated by this PC, we're going to send a copy from switch A to switch D and then after this particular device which is going to monitor the traffic, actual traffic I should say. Likewise, uh, ER span. So in ER span, now we're going to use layer through layer three as supposed to be layer two. So as per the theoretical, we go through the basic example of uh, span, R span, and ER span. Now we're going to configure span first, and then after going to configure R span. So devices up and working and this is the topology where we are going to perform span or a local span. So this is the switch if you are talking about switch this is 2960 running iOS version 15.0 and uh, there is a port F0 slash 2 which is connected to my laptop itself where I have already installed a packet sniffer software known as a Wireshark and these are two devices we are supposed to go and generate some sorts of traffic. So let's say branch going to send data to headquarter and headquarter going to send data, send data to the branch and we want to monitor what they actually going to send to each other. But, uh, but uh, if you are talking about normal activity, your switch create per port, per port collision domain so they are not going to send any sorts of data, uh, they are not going to share any data. Since we are going to use span, then after we, we can monitor that particular traffic which, which is originated from gig 0 slash 1 or gig 0 slash 2 as per the configuration. So let's say uh, what actual command going to be executed on these devices. So my devices is 50, uh, router is 2901 and switch is 2960. So go on to the switch one and execute command so cdp neighbor and as we can see this is gig 0 slash 1 port which is connected to the branch router likewise gig 0 slash 2 connected to the headquarter router and I have another switch in my production network which is not going to talk right now and then configuration going to be uh, change on switch 1. Before going to the switch 1, I would like to show you the IP address of these two routers. So branch router has IP address 1.1.1.1 and headquarter router IP address is 1.1.1.2. So let's check whether we do have a connectivity to branch 2 HQ. So as we can see, we do have a connectivity from branch 2 HQ. We able to ping on switch 1 the actual configuration going to be so command will be monitor session and then the session number so it is depend on your platform how many session it going to allow so simultaneously you can run from 1 to 66 session in particular session you can include multiple source interface and multiple destination interface it could be VLAN as well so let's say for simplicity we are going to use VLAN number, excuse me, session number 10 and then we need to specify which is the source port where we want to copy or monitor the traffic. So let's say source, first we need, uh, we need to define source. Source could be an interface or a VLAN. In upcoming section we are going to talk about remote but not now. So in this case it is an interface gig 0 slash 1 let's say we want to uh, monitor traffic from interface gig 0 slash 1 and then after we can use group of interfaces or some other interfaces as well we can also specify we're going to receive we're going to monitor only receive traffic or transmit traffic or both 
So in my case, for simplicity, I'm going to use both. So monitor session number 10, source interface is gig0 slash 1 and traffic which we're going to monitor both direction which is sending and receiving. So once we define the port where we want to monitor, we also need to define where we want to send the capture data or a mirror data. In this case, in this, case this is at 0 slash 2. So monitor session number 10 and this time destination interface f0 slash 2. So we can verify so monitor session excuse me so monitor session all. So we have a session monitor number 10 in source port address going to be gig0 slash 1 and traffic from both side and destination port is f0 slash 2 and let me show you the interface my interface where I am connected with so this is my network interface card where I am connected with a switch you don't need to require any IP address to configure on this interface but make sure the interface is up and working so that you can configure the traffic or you can put IP address as well it doesn't matter so Wireshark is uh, let me enable Wireshark on Wireshark I am going to use Ethernet interface and start capturing so currently we are not going to send or receive any traffic because traffic is not going to take place so let's generate traffic from from branch router to headquarter. So I'm going to ping branch router to headquarter and repeat it 10 times. So now we can see we're receiving ICMP. So if we're going for telnet, let's enable telnet on this router. So line VTY0, no login. And we can go for telnet as well. So let's say telnet 1.1.1.2. There we go. Enable. Since password is not set, so it's not going to proceed. But we can see we also receiving telnet traffic. So this is what the feature which we have available in switches like span. So using a span feature, we can monitor traffic. Even we do not have a... Uh, even we do not have a hub connected right there. So this is the switch and switch by default create, not by default, I should say it create single collision domain. You, uh, with help of span, we can copy the traffic and sending to the particular device. So it could be a security device like IDS or a monitoring device or analyzer device where uh, maybe a PC which is running a Wireshark or some other packet sniffer software. Uh, in upcoming video, we are going to discuss about RSpan or remote span. In this video, this is all about.